we will take a deeper dive into Canvas. We will talk about announcements, assignments, discussions, navigation features, and the comments. As we begin to dig deeper into Canvas, we are going to explore several features in the course navigation. We will also explore those features with a specific fifth grade science standard. To get started, let's take a look at my home page for my master course. We are going to build a science resource for Earth and Space Science Standard S5E1. Now we are going to build resources in announcements, assignments, and discussions. We're also going to look for resources that support that standard in the Commons. We're also going to end this session by going through several navigation features. So let's go ahead and get started. Today, we are going to use the standard S5E1, which deals with constructive and destructive process. So let's start by clicking on announcements. Now, as we discussed in Canvas 101, to begin an announcement, we simply click the plus announcements tab. This allows us to give the announcement a title and then work within the rich content editor. So I am going to go ahead and title this S5P1. Now you can title this whatever you like, but just for this purpose, I'm gonna start there. Now, as we learned in Canvas 101, we can come right into the rich content editor and type content right here. We can do whatever we want to right in our content editor. So for this training, because this is going to be an announcement to kick off this entire discussion, I'm going to start by just simply adding some text in the middle of the page. Now, because this announcement is going to be the first to introduce this current study, I'm going to ask a couple of questions and also drop a video just to spark the interest of my students. So I'm going to ask my students, have you ever So have you ever wondered how forces change the earth? Now, I'm going to treat this question just like I would in a Word document and maybe change my font a little and also maybe change the color of my font. So from here, I can just basically ask a question. And then I can even say, we are going to learn all about okay. so I could continue writing as much as I like so from here I'm going to tell my students check out this video I'm going to link a video right here from YouTube just to get my kids excited about what we're going to be learning. So to do that, I'm going to click on the external tools, the external plug, and then I'm going to scroll down. I could type that in, but I'm going to scroll down all the way to YouTube. So when I click on YouTube, this is going to take me to a limited view of, you, of a YouTube search. Now I can search anything in YouTube, but I do not have the ability to watch the entire YouTube video. So if you use YouTube inside of Canvas, you will need to basically vet your resource before you embed the resource. So essentially you would need to open YouTube 
through an additional tab and watch your entire resource before you come in and embed that inside of your Canvas course. So I'm going to click on Constructive and Destructive Forces and see my resources that I'm going to um, receive. So for instance, this video here, The Adventures in Constructive and Destructive Forces, I have watched this video numerous times. So I know that if I embed this in my Canvas course, that it's going to be safe and it's going to be accessible and, and use, useful for children. So because I have already embedded this resource, I'm going to click Embed. And the great thing about this is it's going to drop right here into my Canvas course. Now, if just like mine, it, I did not position my last words, um, I can always come back in and reposition those to wherever I would like to move them to. So now I have embedded this video right here into my announcement page just for my students to kind of get them excited. Now, one other thing that a lot of people ask me about that I'm going to show you really quickly, um, just to get some excitement going, I like to use a lot of moving images. So if I'm going to say, check out this video, I might want an arrow or some type of line that's pointing down towards this video. So let me show you how I do that. So I'm going to open another tab and I'm going to type in down arrow GIF. And when I do that, I'm going to filter by images. And I'm going to see if I can locate a moving arrow. So I can see that this one moves. All of them do not. But if it does, I'm going to right click and copy this image. And then I'm going to go back into my Canvas course and I'm going to paste that image. And you can see from there, I can change the boundaries, the borders to readjust the size. So now I have created an announcement for my students just to get them excited about our study of constructive and destructive forces. So when I'm finished, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. If I want my students to like, I could I could enable this feature. I could delay this post if I like, but I'm just going to go ahead and save that. And now it looks pretty inviting for my students to come in and see this announcement. And now they're going to know that we're going to start talking about constructive and destructive forces. And then let's take a look at assignments. First, click on the assignments tab in the course navigation. To begin an assignment, simply click on the plus assignments tab. Now we can create a title for this assignment. The next thing that you would you need to do is to go ahead and decide what kind of assignment do you want to create? Do you want to just write information in the rich content editor for your students to read and respond to? Do you want to drop a document into the rich content editor? What exactly is your assignment's purpose? So in this video, we are going to write some directions and drop a link for students to create a forced copy to have their own document to complete and submit back to the teacher. So to save time, I went ahead and wrote the directions right here for this assignment. So just to refresh some of the um, great features inside the content editor, I'm going to go ahead and highlight and add some color and make this a little fun. Maybe pop off the page just a little bit more for my students, just like I would do if I was typing this in a Word document. Making a few changes here. So the directions basically are going to say that there is going to be a link in this assignment for students to click on the link below, create a copy, rename the document using your last name. There's an example. 
and then complete the assignment. And last but not least, submit a link to the completed assignment. So now we need to add the document into this assignment. So the next thing that I need to do is go and retrieve a link to that document that I created in Google Docs. Google Docs gives you the opportunity and the option to create a document for students and then force a copy for every student to make their own individual copy. So let's first go and find my assignment document. I clicked into a new tab and then I need to be sure that I am in my Newton County School email account. And the next thing that I'm going to do is click on the waffle and click on docs. So I can see that this is the document that I am going to work from. So I want my students to complete this document and submit their completed document independently. So the next thing that I need to do is change the direct URL to this document to tell the URL to make a forced copy. So here's how we do that. Everything after the forward slash, starting with edit, we need to replace with the word copy. Once I have done that, next I can take this full URL and copy the URL and then paste it right here in my assignment. Now, if you are okay with the URL just living right there, then now you can move to the permissions of the assignment. But if you would prefer this assignment link to link behind maybe a picture, I want to show you how easy that can happen as well. So maybe I want this document to link and be a hyperlink behind a picture that says click here. So here's how I do that. I'm going to go to another tab in my Chrome browser and I'm going to type in the words click here. Once I type click here, the next thing I'm going to do is filter by images. Once I find an image that I love, I'm going to click that image. And on the right hand side, I'm going to right click this image and copy the image. Now I'm going to go back into my Canvas course, right click again, and paste that image. Now I need to turn this click here into a hyperlink. So I'm going to copy this link right here. And as we learned in Canvas 101, I can turn this button into a hyperlink by simply clicking on the link in the content editor navigation bar. So I'm going to click on the link and I'm going to come here on the picture and click on external link. Now I'm going to paste that link. As you can see, this picture blinked at me to let me know that this is now a hyperlink to my document. Now, once I have all of my directions and all of the information and all of the documents in my assignment, now I'm ready to set the permissions on my assignment. The first thing that I need to be sure to select is my submission type. This is an online submission, so now I need to decide how my students can return that submission. I typically select text entry, media recordings, and a file upload, just in case if a student downloads the file to their, to their actual computer's desktop. Now I'm gonna look a little further into my assign options. This assignment is going to assign to everyone, and I'm gonna go ahead and set a due date for Friday. Now we talked in Canvas 101 about setting available from and until dates. If you like, go ahead and set an available from 
And you can also set an until date. A word of caution, when you set an until date, once that until date has passed, an assignment can no longer be submitted. So if you allow late assignments, this is going to block students from going ahead and submitting that assignment. So if you choose to leave the until blank, no worries. A late assignment will still be flagged late, but just will be able to be submitted. Now, when you finish all of your assignment permissions and you're ready to make this assignment go live for your students, simply click Save and Publish. If you are only ready to save this but not make it visible for your students, then you would select Save. And I'm going to go ahead and click Save and Publish. Now, I would choose one or the other. I would either drop the URL if you did a forced copy or create a cute hyperlink if you're ready for that. So now let's take a look at what this assignment looks like for a student and let's follow our directions and make sure that we see exactly how this is gonna work. Did you know from the home tab of your course that at any time, you can view this course in student view. Click on the student view option on the home page. This allows you to see what the students see rather than what you see as the designer of this course. So let's click on the assignments tab. And we can see that there is an assignment due right here. So I'm going to click on the assignment and follow the directions. Click on the link below to create a copy. Be sure to rename the document using your last name, complete the assignment, and then submit a link to your completed assignment. Okay, let's follow those steps. I'm going to go with the hyperlinked picture. So I clicked on the document. I'm going to make a copy of this document. I'm going to change the name so that my teacher knows this is my submission. And then once I am finished completing all of the assignment requirements, I'm going to go to share. I'm going to copy the link once I have finished. And inside of my Canvas course, I am going to click Submit Assignment. When I click Submit Assignment, I have several options. So I am just going to complete a text entry and I'm going to paste my document right there. And when I am ready to submit as the student, I can simply click Submit. Now be sure once you are finished viewing your assignment in student view that you click leave student view. Now let's take a look at discussions. Click on the discussions tab in the course navigation and click plus discussion to begin a brand new discussion. I'm first gonna title my discussion and now I'm going to go ahead and get started writing the information to my students for a discussion post. Just like the announcements and assignments, our rich content editor is where all of the important information is going to live for your students. Now to save time, I went ahead and wrote the information for this discussion post. So in this discussion post, we're going to link back to our essential question of how do constructive and destructive forces change our earth? And our task is going to be to craft a, a paragraph to include one constructive force and one destructive force. And we're gonna be sure that we use details in our answer. But it also says to be sure that you can use the resources below to construct your answer. So now let's go ahead and add some resources right here 
for our students to refer back to just in case they may get a little stuck. Let's first go into our external tools and let's go back to YouTube and see if we can find another video as a great resource for our students. And again, remember from with Inside Canvas, you cannot preview the video. So you would need to be sure that the video is acceptable for your lesson and for students. So let's go ahead and embed this video. Now another resource that I can add right into this discussion post for my students to refer to is a slideshow that I have saved in my Google Drive. So let's place that slideshow right here in this discussion post, just in case my students need it as a point of reference. Let's click on the external tool so that we can access our Google Drive. So now I'm going to click on Google Drive. And I'm going to click on select a file. This is going to show me some of my recent files in Google. And I want to utilize this slideshow. So I'm going to click on the slideshow and then click add. Now you may get a notification that says that some things may shift a little. I would simply attach and just preview it to be sure that it still works correctly. Now, as you can see, my document uploaded right into my discussion post. If you want, you can come in and add additional spaces, reposition, do whatever you need to do to make it a little bit more appeasing for you. But this document lives right in this discussion post as a reference, as well as the video. So when you are finished, simply scroll down to the bottom and set your permissions. This discussion post will post to all of your students, but you can add some additional options. Do you want your students to have threaded replies? Would you like them to post before they see other students' replies? Would you like them to be able to like each other's assignment? Now, the last thing that we want to look at is the availability. Be sure to come in and set your availability for this assignment, your to and from until. When you're finished, simply click save. And all of your documents are right here and your PowerPoint is right in this discussion post for your students to view as an embedded document. Now let's take a look at a few important settings in the navigation before we head on over to the commons. From within inside of your course, at the very bottom of your course navigation, you will see a tab that says settings. In Canvas 101, we spend a great deal of time talking about course detail. We also spend some time on course navigation, but I want to spend a little bit more time talking about the drag and drop feature. At any time, you can hide certain options from the course navigation feature for students. So for instance, if you do not want your students to see badges, maybe class notebook, collaborations, anything that you do not want your students to see, you can drag to the bottom. Anything that you want your students to see, you can drag to the top. Once you have organized or rearranged your course navigation bar, be sure that you click save at the very bottom. Now let's double check and make sure that our course navigation looks the way that we want this to look for our students. So let's simply click home and again put on our student view goggles. This allows us to see what our students see. And again, you can see this is a much shorter 
course navigation bar than what we can see as the course designer. Be sure to click leave student view once you finish viewing your course in student view mode. The last thing that I want to show you before we end this session is the commons. As we said earlier in Canvas 101, the commons is a marketplace of great resources that teachers have made available for sharing purposes. So remember the commons lives in the global navigation. So click on the commons tab to access all of the great resources that teachers have posted for sharing. Now, we are going to stick to the same topic of constructive courses, and I'm going to break them apart first and then put them together to see what I can come up with. So if I click on constructive courses, I can see that there are seven resources on that specific topic. As we talked about in 101, we can change our relevancy. So maybe we're looking for those that are the most downloaded, the most favored, or the latest. But with seven resources, I can pretty much gain that information without adding that as a filter. I can also, again, add filters based on specific pieces of content that I'm looking for. But again, since there are only seven resources here, I don't have to add any features to filter this content because I can pretty much look through it and see this is good stuff. So because this resource has 47 downloads, I'm already interested. So let's click into this fifth earth changes over time. Now I can preview this resource and I can basically see a quick view that there are assessments, pages, quizzes, and files right here in this module of documents. I can simply click to see some of the good things that have been placed into this module here as well. I can look at my assignments. I can look at the page and see if I like it. Now, if I love this resource and I think that it's super great and fits my needs, I can simply click the import button under the picture on the right hand side. When I click the import button, I am now prompted to import this content into a specific course. So because I am working through the Dr. Hutchinson master course, I would select that course and then select import content. Now let's go through these steps again by changing to destructive forces. I'm going to simply click the comments again, and I'm going to type in destructive forces. I'm going to see how many resources come up for this topic. Now I can see there are again seven resources for destructive forces. Some of these may look similar to the constructive forces. Some of them may be different types from quizzes, assignments, modules, so on and so forth. I can see that this document that I already previewed is going to also come up again because it's got information about destructive forces as well. So let's take a look at this quiz right here that I can see has 36 downloads. So I'm going to click on the quiz and this allows me to preview this content right inside of the Commons preview window. If I love it, I simply click Import. I select my course. And then complete the import process. Now let's do this one more time. And let's see if we can get more information if we combine constructive and destructive forces together. So I'm going to click on my commons again, and then I'm going to come up to the search bar and let's just see what I get. 
because I put the two words together, I can see that I have less resources as well. But I'm going to look at this quiz here. And again, this one's going to actually be an essay, whereas the other quiz was a mixed question type option. If I love this quiz, I'm going to simply click Import, select my, my course, and finish the import process. Let's recap what we have covered in Canvas 102. So from within inside of a course, we talked about several important features. We've talked about adding announcements and how we can upload videos, resources into those announcements. We created an assignment and attached a forced copy document for our students to complete. We added a discussion post with multiple pieces of content for students to refer back to as a point of reference when they complete their discussion post. We then talked about settings and we talked about how important it is to change and rearrange and organize your navigation course navigation bar. But we also have to be mindful that any changes that we make have to be saved. The last thing that we discussed is our commons, our marketplace for teachers to reuse other people's assignments, activities, resources, because we are really and truly better together.